We can bring you some analysis on uh, the situation in Niger. Let's speak to uh, France 24's Wasim Nasser. Uh, Wasim, uh, just walk us through, if you will, the meaning of the severing of these military uh, accords. What is it for uh, Niger's junta that is done and dusted in terms of those agreements? Well, actually, they are acting uh, the situation of uh, friction with uh, with France, which precedes the other step, which is calling the French to leave uh, the French military to leave uh, Nigerian uh, soil, actu soil actually. But we have to know that uh, once the the putsch took uh, took uh, took place, uh, any cooperation was halted with the French forces uh, on the ground, either those present in the uh, base of Niamey or elsewhere in the country on the front lines next to the Nigerian army facing uh, jihadi, jihadi groups. So this is the, the, the issue here is to put the stakes a little bit higher. And we got to know also yesterday that uh, the uh, Junta's delegation to Bamako with General Modi was sent also to uh, establish, establish contact with the Wagner mercenaries uh, in Bamako. Uh, two Malian sources uh, told us this, it was, which was confirmed today by a uh, diplomatic uh, French source, meaning they are putting the stakes higher and higher. They are, they are taking the same path, they are taking the same playbook as Mali and Burkina Faso, but much, much uh, faster, knowing that uh, they have maybe a military operation uh, pending in the upcoming days. I mean, Wasim, where does this leave uh, the fight uh, against terrorism? You made reference to uh, jihadist groups there. Where does this leave the fight uh, against terrorism in uh, Niger? Because according to the military junta, France hadn't made much headway in any case. What are your thoughts on that? Well, the arguments of the military junta are totally false because the only country that, uh, that was making some uh, improvements in this order was Niger. It's not only because of French involvement, it's not only because of the military involvement of France and the United States, which has uh, a thousand troops on ground and a drone base, but also because of, of the politics, of the policy conducted by Bazoum and by his predecessor, Isufus, in 2020, meaning conducting negotiations and developing rural poor uh, countries, negotiations with jihadi factions. So it was a multidimensional politics conducted at the same time military with the help of France, the US and even the European Union, uh, politics, negotiation with jihadis and development. This, is, this, was, this was the thing that was making it work. And if you look, for example, at death rates in Mali, Niger and Burkina Faso for the year 2022, you see a huge difference between the death toll in Mali, Burkina Faso and Niger in a comparative way. And even if you talk about attacks in Niger, we had two attacks of Al-Qaeda uh, this year in Niger. One caused uh, two or three dead, another one didn't cause any dead. That is one attack of the Islamic State back in February, 14 uh, deaths, knowing that in 2019, only two attacks in ETS caused more than 200 deaths in Niger, and one attack in 2020 at Chinagadora caused more than, more than 100 deaths, you see. So the situation was critical, but it was improving in comparison with the countries uh, uh, concerned like Mali and Burkina Faso. So if you take out French and Western support, the situation will be much, much worse as in Mali, as in Burkina Faso. And especially if you put into the, uh, the mix uh, militias or mercenaries which will commit human rights abuses. We have the latest four reports of human rights watch regarding the situation in Mali and Burkina Faso, which are much, much alarming in this regard. All right, we'll see him giving us uh, some analysis on the situation on the ground in Niger. Thank you. Thank you.